Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of a brand new tier 10 Italian auto reloading medium tank. It is the Lion. This vehicle will be going into the game tomorrow via the assembly shop, which I'm not going to be talking any more about because you've already watched my video from yesterday, right? Today, I'll be giving you a full review on all of the capabilities of the Lion and why it is one of my favorite medium tanks at tier 10. Now, firstly, there's something very important to highlight about the Lion, and that is that it has literally the weirdest auto reloader in World of Tanks. Its first shell takes 21 seconds to reload, then 8, then 10, then 13 for its four round auto reloader. Now I've broken this down into an Excel spreadsheet really to highlight that when we're talking about this tank, the, the final shell or the, the first one that you load taking 21 seconds, you could literally reload the second shell in this tank two and a half times in the time that it would take to reload the first shell. And so accordingly, you should almost think of this thing as just being a three round auto reloader that should never fire the fourth unless it's life or death. And what's even more crazy about this tank is that it has a four and a half second intraclip reload and the second shell, you can get the reload down of it to 6.8 seconds. And that is without using fancy bond vents on this tank or using a directive. And so accordingly, you only have to wait an extra 2.3 seconds to be able to fire the second shell than you would if you just fired the, the, the first shell in the tank after the intraclip reload. And so accordingly, I really think that Wargaming has kind of messed up a little bit here. And I think that that second shell needed a slightly longer reload. And oh, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing ends up getting nerfed because it truly is outrageous with how good that damage per minute is. To put that damage per minute into perspective, I can get to 3,710 with regular equipment and a premium consumable. Whereas when you look at the Leopard, I can only get to 3,546 with a gun rammer on this tank. So that means the Lion only firing its second shell actually ends up with 150 more damage per minute than a Leopard even when the vehicle is not using a gun rammer. So if that doesn't highlight to you how dangerous this vehicle is and also how important it is that you never fire that four shot, I don't know what will. So I'm going to be comparing the Lion to the Progetto 65 and the Caro 45 today before we get jumping into some gameplay. So the Lion, the Progetto, both have 105mm caliber guns, while the Caro 45 has a 120mm caliber gun. However, the gun on the Lion ends up hitting harder than the Caro, even though its caliber is 15 millimeters less. The Lion has 420 damage, which is wonderful, giving this thing a 1680 damage magazine. And even if we forget about the last shot on this tank, it still has 1260 damage. However, the intraclip reload on this tank is very long. Four and a half seconds mean that it's a half a second longer even than the outrageous intraclip on the Caro 45, and two seconds longer than the Progetto. And so accordingly, while the Progetto will dump out 1,440 damage in seven and a half seconds, the Lion will take 13 and a half to be able to deal with its opponents, definitely taking its time to whittle them down. However, as a single shot tank, which also maybe has an auto reloader for a little bit of burst damage, the Lion with 3,150 damage per minute makes the Progetto look silly. It's 50% more damage per minute than a Progetto. When the vehicle's going with its second shell, that's an 8 second reload compared to the 10 second reload on the Progetto when the Progetto is fully loaded and the Lion has 420 alpha instead of 360. It's absolutely awesome. So the rounds that the Lion have is they've got rather mediocre AP rounds of 258 millimeters of pen with poor shell velocity, some great APCR rounds with 1,400 meters a second shell velocity, and I expect there's going to be a lot of people who only take gold inside the Lion, and some great HE rounds as well with 510 alpha damage and 1,000 meters a second shell velocity with 105 millimeters of penetration. This will definitely be one of those tanks that you might want to consider taking some HE rounds in. Also, I'd like to highlight that because of the way that the magazine works, where only the first shell takes a long time to reload, if you have intuition on this tank, you can actually switch out quite conveniently and massively cut down the reload of the longest shell, aka the first one, and then start reloading very quickly with the second, the third, and the fourth shell inside the tank. 
And so this tank is something that really will make use of intuition compared to other auto reloading tanks. However, one thing that does kind of suck about the Lion is that unlike the Caro, it can't carry nearly as much ammunition. And while it's still a good amount of ammo, it can be a little bit awkward towards the latter part of the battle when you start to run out of armor piercing rounds if you take a good amount of APCR as well. Gun handling wise, it's up and down for the Lion here. 2.7 seconds aim time is way better than the Caro, but worse than the Progetto. 0.33 accuracy is really nice and makes the Caro look awful at sniping. But the gun handling on this tank is atrocious, 0.2 when moving and turning the turret. And this means that you really want to use vertical stabilizers on this tank. Whereas on the Progetto 65, you can kind of get away with them. Or should I say, without them. One thing that's bizarre about the line is it actually has the better bloom after firing. But its intra-clip reload is so long at 4.5 seconds that that's kind of irrelevant in the first place. Gun depression wise, all three of these vehicles are at 9 degrees, which is very flexible on a ridge line but not incredible now onto mobility and is the lion really fast well yes and no 60 forwards is not slow 15 backwards however is this vehicle has got really poor reverse speed especially when you take the penultimate field mod that lowers the vehicle's reverse speed to increase its camo rating and unlike the Progetto 65 and the Caro 45T, uh, which you can reduce the reverse speed and they still feel very fast backwards, this thing certainly does feel sluggish. Power to weight ratio wise, this vehicle's got a fabulous 19.3. And if you take the final field mod, it gets even faster. And while it's not going to feel as if it's bombing around like a light tank, this is truly a fast medium. One other little advantage that this vehicle has is great turret traverse at 52 degrees. So I thoroughly recommend taking the field mod that reduces your turret traverse and increases your module durability or should i say your uh, the way that your ammo rack works even when it's damaged so now let's move on to the armor of the lion and really this is where it's kind of not great news for the vehicle so the tank does have a pretty good frontal turret when it's not using its gun depression it's about 260 millimeters of frontal turret armor and we can see that when the lion points its gun directly towards its opponents the sides of the turret will be a ricochet you won't be ricocheting many heat rounds, however, so keep that in mind. The top of the turret does become a little bit of a weak point, but when the vehicle uses its gun depression, this gets even better. So accordingly, when you're shooting at a line of it's pointing its gun directly at you, I'd recommend heat. Or if you've got high penetration APCR, then you can just fire straight through the mantlets, so take advantage of that. But all in all, this is quite a nice hull down tank, especially against 8s and 9s. However, its hull armor, as we can see, is horrendous. Even when the vehicle uses all of its gun depression, it's still not angled enough to be able to ricochet pretty much anything. Also, it has horrible side flap armor here. So if it's using its gun depression, just shoot up straight through the tracks and you're going to overmatch it. And this thing's lower plate, it's absolutely horrendous. Combine that also with 30 millimeters of side armor, which means that it can't side scrape against anything that has a 91 millimeter caliber gun. And you'll see that the hull of this vehicle is incredibly, incredibly vulnerable. And really what it wants to do is just work a ridge line. If it's not working a ridge line, it better be using some mobility to get to the next ridge line or using its auto reload to hopefully finish off the enemy tank before they finish you off. Another little thing to mention about this tank is it actually has zero armor behind these special protections on the ears here and so if you've got he rounds you can actually easily go through these weak points and even from the side you're going to be able to go through the weak points against uh, a lion and you'll do some massive damage to that tank so add on to this mediocre armor that i'd say is worse than the progetto massively worse on the hull but kind of comparable on the turret to 1850 hit points and yeah this is definitely more of a glass cannon kind of tank however the vehicle's camera rating while it's not as good as the progetto 65 is far from bad and it has 400 meters view range which means that you're never really going to need coated optics on this tank crew wise the lion works identically as the progetto 65 so if you've got your italian auto reloading medium tanks then they will work fine on this my crew recommendations will be an advanced commander and that is because the commander is also the radio operator so you're definitely going to want to have brothers in arms situational awareness recon as well as also improving the camera rating of this tank but for all of the other crew members there's not really too much pressure the loader might struggle a little bit if you really want to have absolutely everything as i do recommend you have intuition on this tank so you can be able to do that cheeky full switch out of a magazine and apart from that it's about taking things like snapshot on your gunner as well as smooth ride on your driver so you can be able to improve the vehicles rather poor gun handling equipment wise on the lion 
I feel that the vehicle wants to use a turbo, vents, and vert stabs. And the reason for that is because if you don't use a turbo, your reverse speed on this vehicle is horrendous. However, if you are a free-to-play player, you're probably going to want to end up dropping one of those modules probably the turbocharger to use coated optics on this tank otherwise you're not going to achieve a very good view range and this vehicle does do very well when it can spot for itself my second build on the line will be focusing on the camera rating of the vehicle for when you get onto those sneaky maps i'm going to be using vents i'm going to be using a vision system and i'm going to be using an exhaust now keep in mind this will massively reduce the combat capacity of this vehicle with the vert stabs and also with the mobility with the turbo, but this will make the tank very sneaky and able to outspot all but the best of light tanks. Field mods wise, this vehicle is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go for the module durability increase because the vehicle already has fantastic traverse speeds. I'm gonna improve the accuracy of the vehicle. I'm gonna improve the concealment of the tank However, if you don't really care about being sneaky, then you might actually either not want to take this or even take the reverse speed. Otherwise, this tank is going to end up being very slow. For the penultimate field mod, I personally recommend the reload time on this tank. It massively improves your ability to not actually have to use the auto reloader and to just keep firing it as a single shot tank. On this vehicle alone, it shaves off 0.2 seconds from that second clip and every second that you can shave off the reload of this vehicle, it means that you don't have to fire that fourth shot and use that absolutely amazing second shell damage per minute, which gives this the highest damage per minute pretty much of any auto reloading tank inside the game. For the final field mod, I personally recommend taking the engine power. However, I would like to highlight that this vehicle does not have very good aim time. And so if you find yourself as more of a sniper rather than somebody who wants to get around the map and use the tank as an auto loader, then you either might not want to take this field mod or alternatively even go the other way. But it's not how I would play the tank. And of course, on a vehicle like this, I thoroughly recommend you take it the scouting slot. And this scouting slot will allow my main build to be able to improve the vents on this tank and for my second build, I'm going to take a vision system inside that scouting slot. And so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, let's go and see why the lion might be the new king of the battlefield. All right, so firstly, we are rolling out on Sand River inside a nice matchup. No artillery to worry about and a lot of juicy tier 8 tanks that we can be able to munch on. And when you've got 420 alpha damage, uh, kind of like almost two-shotting, uh, the light tanks or uh, three shotting the tier 8 mediums does feel outrageous. I, 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 it, it's kind of scary to me that this just became one of the most dangerous medium tanks inside the game and the fact that everybody's going to have to dump so many credits or so many resources to be able to get their hands on it. So do you notice how long that first shell took to reload? And also do you notice that even with the vert stabs on this tank, how long the aim time is and the bloom on this vehicle? It's absolutely outrageous. I would thoroughly recommend you get as good vert stabs on this vehicle as you possibly can. But it's weird because it's not really the kind of tank that needs the vert stabs to be able to um, keep shooting. Because the intraclip reload is so long. So even while the aim time is long on this tank, the intraclip reload of four and a half seconds means that you don't need the vert stabs to use it as an auto reloader, but you need the vert stabs to just be able to keep dynamic and to keep shooting. All right, so I spotted across the middle of the map, got a sneaky shot in a Conqueror. I was unfortunate to be able to get more vision, but it looks like the enemy heavy tanks, either they're a little bit too sneaky or maybe they went the safer way to go over their mound at F1 rather than getting caught. So in this kind of a situation, I'm just going to tell my team, scout in the bush. It's because we got spotted probably in LT432 or an ELC, even 90. And I'm going to make my way up here to see if we can provide any ambush shots. And there we go, CS63. We hit that tank, don't quite manage to deal any damage. And this tank's really crazy. Because in a tank like the Progetto, sometimes I feel very awkward about firing. But you'll see that I'm just going deeper into the magazine. Because the deeper I go into the magazine, the better the reload gets. And look how quickly these shells are reloading right now. This doesn't feel like an auto-reloader. And it's not like I'm using a bond directive or using bond vents. But look how long this fourth shell takes. Um, yeah, it's 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 crazy to me that your, your highlight of the vehicle is that second shell reload. And it actually takes longer to be able to reload the fourth shell. 
And so there's no point of holding on. There's really no point of holding on. You might as well fire. It's kind of like an easy mode auto reloader from that example. Look how quickly this shell is going to reload. Did you hear how the intraclip reload only just finished and 2.3 seconds later, as I highlighted, we get the, the shell loaded? Now we've got a whole extra one. I'm going to keep this for just an extra second. I'm going to fire it out. Might as well, because I don't want to go too deep into the magazine, even though my reload is getting faster. But I feel like I've got the extra time. You'll actually notice that I actually fired a second early there. Because honestly, with this tank, I don't want to take that 250 damage. Whereas if I was playing another auto reloader, I might have risked taking the 250 damage there. And so it's just crazy that you should just blast away until you've got one shell in this tank. And as I said, this tank should be treated as it's pretty much just a three round auto reloader. Like, am I gonna fire this one? I really don't want to, because look how quickly that second shell reloads. But if I fire that fourth, I'm gonna have a 21 second reload base. It is bizarre. And I really think that Wargaming have made quite a mistake with this vehicle. I think it has too much damage per minute. And it's going to be this, like, outrageous vehicle. Talk about outrageous. That was an outrageously bad shot. Although, to be fair, I am meant to be on holiday at the moment. I haven't been playing World of Tanks as actively the last few days. Been taking a little bit of time off the old World of Tanks. Last time I streamed World of Tanks, I think, would have been Tuesday. But dang, son. Look how quickly this thing packs up damage. In retrospect, I'm kind of not happy with my plays there. I shouldn't have taken two shots from the uh, Carnarvon. I think that's a little bit too much damage to take. But we are doing some substantial damage to it. We dealt... Uh, I mean, to be fair, I high rolled. We did, what, 943 damage to him? And we also managed to get 600 assistance. That's literally his entire tank in a couple of shots there, even with the poor aim by me at the beginning. This thing is just such a force to be reckoned with. And the fact that it's fast, especially fast with a turbo, yeah, it feels pretty scary. Okay, so in this kind of a situation, I think I've been spotted either by an LT-432 who's in a bush or alternatively spotted from that D2 area. Now, I don't want to get caught by any of the enemy tanks, so I'm just going to go and chill in this ridge and start to snipe. And remember, this vehicle, its end time isn't great, its bloom isn't good when it's moving. You can improve that with the vert stabs, but you really don't need something like an aiming device on this vehicle. It's weird, this tank... Like a Progetto 65 without vert stabs would have the same gun handling as this. But this tank has kind of the same accuracy as if you'd put the aiming device on the Progetto 65. And so it's kind of like swings and roundabouts in that way. But I wouldn't recommend putting the aiming device on this vehicle unless you absolutely, utterly must try and snipe. And that's your, your place. But for me, I think you lose a lot of the combat capacity that this thing would have in close quarters combat. I think vents scale really well on auto-reloaders, and I do feel like I have some good synergy with my auto-reloaders. And yeah, I fire my fourth shot, oh sorry, my third shot, it doesn't even really matter. Look, we've, we've nearly got it back again. It's weird, it's weird, it's like you're playing just a regular tank, and you can go deep into the magazine, and your reload is getting faster and faster and faster until that fourth shot, which you never fire unless it's like an emergency situation. So the VZ-55 gets in, finishes off the ELC-90, and just like that, with some damage on the Iron Arnie and the M103, I'm up to 6,000 damage, boys and girls, and I really don't feel like I've done anything outrageous inside this game. Talk about outrageous, uh, kind of making a bit of a misplay here. Uh, I'm loading my last three AP shells, whereas I should really start dipping into my gold rounds inside this tank. I tell my Minotauri he's going to help him, thinking that maybe they were on reload. However, the Minotauro had that problem sorted themselves. Aiming, 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 aiming. Long aim time on this tank. But it doesn't even really matter too much. You can fire the first, take a risk, and then if your second hits. In this kind of a situation, unfortunately, you're going to see the long reload now. 17 seconds. And imagine that if we had the intra clip, right? Not that it would really matter because if you've seen this shell, you don't have any more shells to fire, right? Inside the vehicle. But you really do cripple yourself if you decide to fire that fourth shell. So you should only really do it if it's like, if it's going to avoid you taking a huge amount of damage and there's no more damage to deal because not only do you have to reload that shell for 21 seconds but then you have to kind of like reload the second shell so that you don't cripple your damage per minute again but oh talk about crippling the damage per minute ladies and gentlemen that was 6,800 damage and 1,500 assistance that we saw excluding the damage that we dealt to the tier 8 italian auto reloading tank destroyer wow this thing i have to admit when it gets going Boy, does it feel good. And I think that this one's going to become one of my favorites. Uh, but I also worry about the balance of a tank like this. This is fast, voracious, and it's a farmer. 
And considering that it also has turret armor, when you're playing your tier 8s or your tier 9s against this, and you don't have those kind of premium gold rounds to be able to go through the turret, oh, might this be the first of the overpowered, should we say, glass cannon or auto-reloaders that we've seen in World of Tanks? Well, I think that might be a bit of a bold statement. Let's take a look at some more gameplay when it doesn't just drive around willy-nilly, just getting lucky. All right, so this time we are rolling out on Lakeville. Bit of a tricky map for this tank. And now we're playing against some pretty scary tier 10 tanks as well. There's some Clan Wars reward vehicles that we're going to have to deal with on the enemy team in the form of the 907. And there's also two artillery. And not just two artillery, two accurate, fast-firing artillery that we're going to have to contend with. So in this kind of a situation, I still want to try and get my lion to the front, if not just to be able to spot my opponents and see what they're up to, but also we might be able to get some chancy shots. In retrospect there, I wish I'd kind of fired, but if I'd fired, I would have gone down to only having um, one shell in the tank. Two shells, but one effective shell that I could actually fire, which could have been a little bit awkward. And oh dear, yeah. Talk about awkward. Yeah, I, I really just don't think this is the kind of tank for this position. Maybe if there would have just been one heavy, maybe if there'd been two heavies and I've had an opportunity to get some farming damage in. But I really just can't see a vehicle with rather lackluster turret armor and nine degrees of gun depression really juking it out with these tanks, while also the fact that there's two self-propelled guns to deal with on the enemy team. So I'm going to drop back, I'm going to drop out, and maybe I can provide some fire support. Because after all, this vehicle is a voracious sniper. It's got that .33 base accuracy, it's got the mobility to be able to get into position. But unfortunately, uh, that IS-7 doesn't look like they've got the brain cells to be able to survive more than a couple of minutes in this game. Although, to be fair, everyone can get caught out by VZ-55. Maybe I'm being a little bit uh, too mean there. You know what, I've died first in very, 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 very many games of World of Tanks, so I probably can't say much. So, oh dear, RT party. 289, it's a substantial amount of damage to take from a stunning shell from a batch at 15558. And that's because, again, this vehicle is a little bit of a glass cannon tank. So I'm a little bit worried about it getting spotted by the VZ-55, but luckily they're a little bit sleepy here. And, oh wow, that IS-7's gun? Even in death, they're still trolling me? Talk about trolling me. Oh, come on, arty. But it's so scary in this tank. I can whiff shells. It doesn't even really matter. I can just go deep into the magazine. Look at my reload time. I can just keep doing this. Of course, I've got to wait for this shell to reload and hopefully wait for the stun to go away. And this DPM is scary. It's like an auto-reloader that... It's like an IS-3A that just... If you just don't fire the fourth shell. It's like an IS-3A if you just don't fire the fourth shell. And in that kind of a situation, I didn't want to sit in front of the E4. And I didn't want to, like, wait for that little bit of extra time to reload. So I just fired. And what's... How... I, what, where's the punishment? There is no punishment, really. Because as long as you don't fire the fourth shell... I keep hammering this home, but I really got to hammer it home for all of you. There's no punishment. And so I really think that Wargaming have kind of made a big mistake here, in my opinion, with the Lion. I just think that this second shell is just OP. Uh, and it kind of means that what this tank is, is it's really a, a three-round auto-reloader with 420 damage in a long intra clip. Kind of reminds me a little bit about the Char Future 4. And you know what? I think this tank is going to become a bit like a Char Future 4 for me. It's kind of got enough armor to deal with those lower tier tanks. And oh dear, talk about... Ooh, RT-285. Ooh, RT-618. They were pre-aimed for us there, boys and girls. I'm not sure if it was because the E-50 was spotted or because I was spotted. But I wanted to show you this game because... Ouch, man. 618 damage. 285 260 damage. This thing does not take artillery shells very well. It is a glass cannon medium tank. Just because it looks as if it's kind of quite modern, it's definitely not modern with regards to its armor layout. It is, to all intents and purposes, a leopard with an auto reloader. Now you notice that I've actually switched out to gold rounds here. I'm not sure if I did an intuition switch. Reload the replay to see that, or if I just did a hard reload by firing the fourth shell there. But with a dead commander, my sixth sense isn't going off, but I don't need sixth sense to tell me that I'm spotted if the Kranvong turns their turret directly towards me. I'm going to come around the corner slowly, I'm going to pull back. They're probably going to end up trying to blind fire me there. And, um, yeah, just a little bit worried. Without a commander and without a hope. So I'm actually going to try and do something a little bit funky. Here's the intuition switch. You hear it. 
We got that extra shell in, but of course I'm going to wait for the second shell. And this isn't only something that you could do with HE shells, this is something you could do with APCR rounds as well if you don't like spamming gold like me. And I'm trying out something a little new. Unfortunately, this is the first time I've ever tried this, and you'll see that I didn't get the direction quite right. But if I zoom out, and then I kind of need to aim just a little bit up, then maybe, just maybe, I can knock down a tree into a position. And then, will this allow me to stay hidden as I get my commander back up? It actually does. Now I don't get spotted by the Kranvang as I come around the corner because of that bush. So if I'd just done that at a different angle, I think I just created a new snipey position for myself. And if I'm playing a bigger TD with worse camo, then it could be quite good. You'll notice that people are blind firing me here. Pretty obvious. Uh, but it's actually handling, it's ending up okay. Now we're going to do an awkward reload. We're switching from those two HE shells. And because we didn't have enough of them to do an intuition switch, you'll notice that we're taking a very long time to reload the APCR rounds here. But again, I wanted to show you this battle because it's... It really shows you what the resilience is of the lion. And no, I'm not talking about its armor. I'm talking about the resilience in its flexibility. It's why I've always loved auto reloaders. They have the opportunity to have the firepower. They have the opportunity to fire one by one by one. And this vehicle, as we're going to see as we transition, um, finding just very bad luck against the artillery and very bad luck at managing to snipe against our opponents, how good this vehicle can be as like a support medium tank that takes the fight to the enemy team. And this is what we're going to do in the center of this map. We're going to advance across. We're going to try and help out the Fosh 155. I hesitated there because I was thinking the Object 907 was going to plow through, and I thought that maybe I needed to go and get some support fire against them. But I think the 907 hesitated, and I've got to trust the Amex M454 is going to handle his scenario. It's a nice little bit of a boost there to be able to get past the tank. And the vert stabs allow us to be able to catch that K91 on the move, as well as also ricochet their shell, which is nice. Now keep in mind that his 100mm gun could be able to overmatch the whole of the side of my vehicle. So either he hit my upper hull at a funky angle, or they hit my turret. Either way, I'm not complaining. It means that I've got enough hit points to be able to take a shot from him, or from a quite a variety of vehicles at least half the time. So I want to get around the corner here and try and get my team into the game. And I'd like to highlight as well that these first seven minutes of this battle I only did pretty much like a thousand combined but now we're starting to uh, get there. Wow, K91 rushes the shot and that enough armor on this tank I guess allows me to get away with murder. And the K91 now shut down We've actually started to control the center of this map. And even though it's neck and neck with seven tanks or seven vehicles left on either team, we're going to start to see what kind of momentum the, the line can build. And I, I want to highlight that this tank with its outrageous damage per minute doesn't actually need very long to start to get a very scary game. So I'm going to suggest to the uh, 121B on my team that why don't they push forwards. The E100 is going to say that they're going to help me. However, E100, I'm not sure advancing into a Leopard's line of fire is really going to be too advantageous for me right now. I think I've got to wait for the hit points on the 121B and the Badger, who is actually full health, to swing around, dig out the Leopard from the corner, and then I'll be able to also support them. Because the worst thing that you can do when you're down to a one-shot is to give your tank away. What you want to do is stay in the battle. Keep an auto-reloaded gun like this going. And so I suggest to the team, our Badger and 121B need to push first. Then I can support. Just trying to communicate as much as I possibly can. And to be fair, it looks like the Badger and the 121B actually start to push. So thank you very much to you guys. I think they, they saw what the move was here. And that myself pushing in was not going to help. However, when I see the FE215B183 getting into position, I have to support them. Though those two players, they're not going to live long against the RT and FE215B support. However, we can come around the corner, clutch shot the tracks, and we don't even need to shoot the top of the turret there as the Badger manages to finish them off. I see the 121B got shot for 407 damage, so that's either a Kranvang or it's a Leopard. Not sure exactly which, we're just going to have to chance it. And so I'm going to come around the corner very slowly, looking for the corner here to see if there's going to be anyone on it. The artillery is just nailing my friends there. So I'm going to go get round. I'm going to hug in on the left. The leopard actually gets spotted. And you know what? It's so scary to think on a vehicle like this. that You might as well just take your chances with the shots. And 454 damage? I've got the same alpha damage as a leopard. And having 420 damage on this vehicle is just so much nicer than having 360 on a Progetto. 
And it can also allow you to high roll, possibly. Not quite high enough, but 391 still feels like a meaty old shot. So I'm going to hopefully bait this leopard around the corner and get my 1 to 1 B into this battle and just see how our damage is adding up and up and up. We were put down to a one shot very early with the only damage we've taken from artillery inside this game. But now we're up to 4,500 combined. It's starting to actually look pretty good. And I've got the turret armor. The leopard doesn't have the turret armor. I can clutch shot them. They actually managed to catch me, but I've got the auto reloader, so I'll finish them off. And the 50B, while I do have a four and a half second intra clip reload, mate, it's not that bad. I'm not missing shots like that. And again, we're going deeper into the magazine and it doesn't matter. We've got one second left on the reload. I'm gonna fire it now. How scary is this tank's DPM. And I decide to fire the fourth because I thought that was going to be the last opportunity that I had to fire this game. And realistically, I should have probably held it for the batch at 155.58. You know what? If you get me, mate, you get me. But the 1 2 1 B actually shuts that tank down, picking up their third kill of the battle. And we turned an awful game, a very awkward battle, into a very decent round of World of Tanks with. 5,000 and 800 combined. Look, it's not going to be a, a new record for this vehicle by any means. But I really wanted to show you just how consistent this vehicle can be because of its flexibility. This thing really is kind of the be-all, end-all of medium tanks inside the game. It has the mobility of something like a leopard it has all of the uh, the auto reloading capacity if not more of something like the Progetto 65 and it has all of the dpm of something like an sdb1 with the alpha damage not quite the same as a 430 or a 121 uh but one yeah, yeah the 121 but nearly getting there with 420 alpha and combine that with some turret armor as well man this thing is just crazy and while it's not going to be an overpowered vehicle in everybody's hands, casual players will not do well in this tank. I can tell you that people who know how to use auto reloaders and they're very good players as well who know how to use auto reloaders are going to shred inside this vehicle. It is a terrifying prospect to fight on the battlefield. And for me at least, it kind of feels as if it's a, a tier ch 10 Char Future 4. And you know how much I love the Char Future 4. I can tell you, I love this tank. Results wise, 7,000 damage dealt, 1,190 base experience with 1,500 assistance. That's an eight and a half thousand game. The subsequent game was 4,800 damage, enough for me to finish number one on experience at 1,259. And we got 964 assistance as well. And that was enough to be able to get our ace tanker in the lion. However, I can tell you that that amount of base experience is not going to be enough to get an ace tanker in a lion for very long. And so I thoroughly recommend if you get your hands on this vehicle, you try and play it as quickly as possible on Thursday, because this thing is going to be getting outrageously high big games. And so this poses two dangerous things. Firstly, I personally think the lion is is overpowered. Uh, at least for me and my playstyle, I think this thing is outrageous. It has too much damage on its second shell and with Wargaming's nerfing history, i.e. never nerfing a reward vehicle they've put into the game, I think that the lion is going to be the new best tier 10 medium tank, at least for me and my playstyle. And so this is very dangerous because while this isn't like a Soviet medium tank or a Soviet heavy tank or even an AMX M454, which just has all round great performance and has shed loads of armor and maybe crazy burst damage or really high alpha damage, the Lion has kind of everything in every area at a very scary level without having necessarily the outrageous burst damage that would make it truly overpowered or crazy armor, which leads to tanks being overpowered in the game. However, also when I consider how much this vehicle is going to cost with regards to resources and the uncertainty whether Wargaming would actually ever make it available again in the future, I am very concerned that maybe this is Wargaming's uh, new get rich quick scheme. Release tens of thousands of vehicles at what would be for a currency at least a hundred pounds a pop, screw with the matchmaker even more at tier 10 and make it so that you have to be an absolute sweat lord whale 
and log in at a specific time to even get your hands on this tank. And I'll be very interested to see how the community respond to the lion, whether all of them are going to sell out ridiculously quickly and what people will think about their performance and how outrageous I personally think they could be in the right hands on the battlefield going forwards. Because I don't really see people complaining about the Bat Chat 25T, the TVP, the Progetto 65. People haven't cried, so to say, about autoloaders in a very long time. And this might be the first which bring people back to do so. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full tank review on the line. Really hope you enjoyed it and you th thought it was useful. If it was, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the line in the comments down below. Do you think that its statistics look outrageously good? Or do you think that the vehicle has enough drawbacks to stop it from being overpowered? And will you pick one up tomorrow when this vehicle is released? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.